Hi everybody, my name is Isaac Johnson. Welcome to Pause Up. This is our radio show covering everything Buffalo State College athletics. Joining with me today is one of the Bengals, Jordan Gilbert. She's an upperclassman on the cheerleading team, and she's going to tell us everything there is to know about the upcoming season. Jordan, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Um, there has been a lot going into um, our season starting, and so I'm really excited to get into it with you. Yeah, no no sense in delaying our interview any longer. Uh, why don't you just let everybody know what is cheerleading? Well, I think that is a very broad question, but Thanks. <laughs> I think that it's a very important one. I think there's a lot of misconceptions and a lot of stereotypes that do uh, revolve around cheerleading that are not exactly true. So we do a little bit of it all. Think of dance, gymnastics, even powerlifting all combined into one. Uh, there's many different aspects of cheerleading and a lot of people don't get to see it all. Does it upset you when people question whether it is a sport or not? Because I know that is a big misconception and stereotype and controversy. It's up in the air. Uh, NCAA does not recognize cheer as a sport as of now. Yeah, so it's really upsetting to me that it isn't recognized as a sport. But as far as other people giving us a hard time about cheer being a sport, it doesn't really bother me that much. Um, I know that we are doing things that not a lot of people can do. And just continuing on with uh, sort of the misconceptions with cheerleading, what are some other things that people might stereotype about cheerleaders and the culture revolving around the sport? I think that a lot of people often default to the cheerleader type that is shown in the media of the popular mean girls who don't really do all that much, which is completely and utterly wrong. Cheerleading is one of the most dangerous sports. There's many studies out on that. And we work as hard as any other sport. A lot of people say that it's for male sports where the word eye candy is typically thrown around. And I think that that, it's just, it's not what cheerleading is in a whole. We are there at games. We do cheer for different sports, but we're there to pump up the crowd to generally lift up spirits when we're losing and keep the crowd encouraging the team when we're winning. So that's really the side of cheerleading that your typical person's going to know and be most accustomed um, to knowing. But the lesser known side, lesser shown by the media, you could say, would be the competitive side of cheerleading where our athleticism really shines through as individuals where we are traveling throughout the state and even the country competing at competitions um, against other collegiate cheerleading teams with a two minute and 30 second routine that involves everything I talked about before. So your stunting, your dance, your tumbling, your jumps, um, and sometimes even a cheer. So wow, that's a lot of travel it sounds like between you said the state and even the country. Is cheerleading a pretty expensive sport? It's one another misconception that I wouldn't have thought of. Yeah, cheerleading being one of the most dangerous sports is also one of the most expensive sports. There is a lot of travel, and like you said, we are not recognized by the NCAA as a collegiate sport, uh, which there is a lot I could get into with that, but as far as funding goes, uh, the school, specifically Buffalo State, has refused to fund us because we're not NCAA recognized, which means the insurance to cover any injuries, anything bad that happens, we had to fund on our own. Our uniforms are funded on our own. There's pom-poms, there's bows, there's sneakers, there's practice wear. And then when you go into the competitive side, you have to pay for music for your routine, which can run you at minimum $500. When we're talking about per athlete costs, what are we looking at per year? So we actually did just break this down um, a little bit ago, my team and I, and last year alone, per athlete, including travel, was over $1,500 for the season out of pocket. That is a lot more than I would have guessed, but when you talk about all of these different attributes to it, it, it does make sense. So dangerous. The word dangerous keeps coming up. I 
I'm sorry, but what could possibly go wrong with a couple of pom poms and a group of college girls out on the floor? Like, what what are you guys in danger of? So cheerleading is a team sport. We are all interacting with each other at the same time. We are all doing different things. So. When you think about stunting, we are lifting and throwing bodies. These girls aren't stick thin because they have to be able to have muscle to be able to hold themselves up there. So you're throwing girls 15 feet in the air, holding them up. That could be a lot of injuries waiting to happen from girls falling out of stunts, hitting the floor, hitting other people on the way down. And then you think about tumbling when girls are flipping multiple times at the same time as other people. Imagine two people back flipping into one another. How catastrophic that could be. Clearly there's more than what meets the eye for cheerleading. We'll be right back with more from Jordan Gilbert. But first, a quick word from our commercial sponsors. Welcome back to Pause Up. I'm Isaac Johnson. Again, alongside me, Jordan Gilbert from the Buffalo State cheerleading team. So Jordan, now that we have a foundation for what cheerleading is, tell us about this season, how it compares a little bit to last season uh, coming out of COVID, and what you're looking forward to, some of the challenges that you may have faced coming into this season. Give us the rundown. Yeah, so we definitely have had some setbacks this season so far. Um, I would say it's looking a little different than it has in the past. So I am a veteran on the team, and traditionally a cheer season at Buffalo State will start really getting into practices in August, beginning of August. Um, And then we'll get into more of our competition things as school is starting. Um, Unfortunately, we did not get to start our season until the beginning of October this year, which has put us at a real disadvantage of where we are as a team. What is it specifically that delayed the start to your season? So we had um, our coach from last year, she resigned. She was just moving on to different things, more family things, totally understandable. Uh, We had a new coach who submitted an application and did not get an answer from the school um, on whether her application was accepted or what was going on with the team even until I would say, I think it was beginning of August, um, which is when we would be normally starting our season. And then even worse news came out. We had learned that the cheerleading team at Buffalo State has not had liability insurance on the team. So that was now being brought up to us saying that we have had to, we have to figure out how to get our own insurance or become a part of USG, which is a whole other process in itself. So the reason for this being is that we are not NCAA recognized as a sport. So the school says we don't fall under their liability insurance, meaning we would have to pay for it on our own on top of everything else that we'd have to pay for. So that's all sounding pretty discouraging for the upcoming season. What's the status of the team right now? Is there any sort of silver lining, a plan moving forward maybe? Yeah, so we actually have started our season um, and it's looking very hopeful like there is that light at the end of the tunnel Um, we have a lot of talent that has joined the team um, and we are starting our cheering at games we have our first game coming up on November 18th where we'll be performing at despite all of these setbacks we have just kept persevering Uh, we have kind of been like the little engine that could if you would want to say we are kind of doing this all on our own without the school's help but we continuously remind ourselves that we did place fifth in the nation last year at nationals and every single year that we do go back to competing at nationals we get closer and closer to getting that national title and bring the school more publicity and more light well jordan i do just want to wish you luck uh, for the upcoming season Uh, it sounds like you guys really have finally found your stride things are finally coming together for you and that is just so awesome to hear This really has the potential to be such an underdog story, as you said. Uh, So thank you for joining me today, and uh, good luck this season. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity, and we appreciate your support. Go Bengals. Go Bengals. I'm Isaac Johnson. Thank you for listening to Pause Up. We will see you next time.